Hey, good morning and welcome. Happy Hump Day. Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group and, of course, legal, lawful, constitutional tender. Gold and silver, it is what we do, the physical delivery of the metal. Our toll-free number, 800-951-0592. The website at allamericangold.com. I'll welcome to all the podcasters, the YouTubers. Uh, uh, the show is just uh, blowing up all over the place. The, the downloads continue every Every couple of weeks, uh, our web guy, Ryan, gives me an update. And uh, not surprising, as things get crazier and crazier out there, more and more people uh, finding relief in, in the truth that is, well, that we give out to you every single day here at Patriot Trading Group. And I don't even know where to begin. It, it, it's Wednesday. It's hump day. Uh, did, I don't know if you've seen the thing where apparently now Twitter and Facebook and YouTube they're the new uh, social police. They're going to tell you what you can hear and what you can't hear. Uh, a group of doctors okay, put, to, uh, put together a conference, and it had to do with a variety of different things related to coronavirus. Uh, hydroxychloroquine was, was one of them and different treatments and, and uh, what they were actually seeing. And, of course, one of them, and there, I mean, there was a big group of them. They were in front of the Supreme Court, by the way, which is kind of cool. Uh, but one of them was, was attacking uh, Fauci, saying, when's the last time you even saw a patient, right? So how are you an expert on what's happening out there? Uh, and they, this video is a great video. Uh, my wife had posted it on her Facebook page and, you know, all over the place. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it immediately uh, was taken down and discredited and and we're living in this world now where freedom of speech these are medical doctors now now nah, no, you know what we don't care what you say because that doesn't go with what uh, the liberal media wants you to hear and and I just find it fascinating uh, Glenn is with us today the professor Glenn Biddle uh, was able to join us today Glenn do you know what I'm talking about did you see the video uh, I guess we don't, uh, but hopefully, Glenn, if you if they figure it out, uh, just jump in here. It was fascinating that this group. Of the, I mean, it's not like it's not even government censorship. It'd be one thing if uh, I guess the White House said, "Hey, you can't listen to this." No, this is uh, the these companies, and I don't understand how they could take the medical doctors that are actually treating COVID patients. And essentially saying, hey, you don't have the right to hear this. Right? We're banning it all. We're blocking it all. Uh, it, it, it's, it, it, it's shocking. Then you think about what's happening all over the country with the riots. And, and uh, yesterday, uh, Barr was testifying in front of Congress. And the, the nastiness. And they're talking about, they want to call the rioters protesters. And, of course, Barr was having none of it. He goes, no. When you start fires and throwing projectiles and hitting cops, and the, yeah, you, you're no longer a protester. You're a rioter. And uh, apparently I'm seeing where Oregon and the government are uh, reaching a deal to withdraw the federal agents from Portland. I hope that means that they're going to actually – uh, do their job and start arresting these people, but uh, we'll have to wait and see how how all of this plays out. But it, but it's one of those things where you know, then you think about we've got the the stimulus, which again here it's Wednesday, still nothing, right? So all of these people uh, that are on unemployment, and I told you thirty some odd million. Tomorrow we're going to get jobless claims again. I, I, it's going to be another huge number. Uh, people are now uh, talking about half of the jobs, half of the people that have been unemployed, those jobs are never coming. They're gone. In other words, because of, of the shutdown, they're gone. So you're talking about, I believe after tomorrow, we'll be around $54 million. So you're talking about what, 27 million people will be permanently out of work. You know, the, the number right now is at $32 million. That was last week's number. If you took uh, the continuing claims from the government plus 
the 1099 people that were allowed to file, 32 million, aren't going to get any extra money starting uh, this week uh, without a new round of stimulus. Uh, it, it's it's incredible when we sit there and we think about uh, all the things that are happening. Obviously, we got huge debts. We, yesterday, we talked about Goldman saying that uh, the dollar. Uh, reserve currency now under under a lot of strain. I've got an update on China. China, these guys have been really working. We haven't focused a lot on them. You know, we've got our own problems with COVID here. We haven't focused a lot on China. You know, we know that that the war drums are beating again, and and China's now making a a really outward plan to make sure. Uh, that the dollar is being replaced. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. I believe that we've got Glenn. Glenn, are you there? I am, Joe. How are you? Hey, Glenn. Welcome. I I, I know we had a little technical difficulty. I know we're coming up on the break real quick, but I just wanted to get your input. Have you seen that video with the doctors? That got I have. I I did. I saw it. I put it up on our 1360 KHNC Facebook page, and uh, I, I saw it on Tucker last night for the first time. And apparently, if you try to get it off of his site, it's also blocked again. So they're they're shooting on all all cylinders here to to keep the message quiet, well, we Joe. We tried to get it out there. You can't do it. So, hey, it's Toronto hard. News Hour. We, we'll be back right after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Gold continuing to run. Uh, Nineteen sixty uh, right now uh, on gold this morning. Gold uh, had a crazy morning. Uh, got got all the way in London. Got all the way to nineteen seventy seven uh, on the spot price, which was essentially where it was um, the other day when gold the December contract hit two grand. Big pullback, a profit taking. It was down to 1940. I thought, hey, we're going to get a pullback. Well, well, we're actually open, and then uh, came right roaring back. And uh, gold's now up ten bucks. Uh, I know Kitco's got it up two dollars and change, but uh, that was the electronic trading in the aftermarkets. Uh, Brian and Jason did a great job on the the afternoon show. Uh, for all you people that uh, aren't in the listening area for 1360. Uh, tune in uh, the afternoon show, the Colorado Front Range show uh, that runs there in Colorado. And, and Glenn, help me with the time. What time does that show run? Is it three to four Colorado time? Yes, because that's uh, five o'clock my time. So yeah, that's that's so, three so to four for three, Colorado three time. Three to four yep. Colorado time, and Colorado is on the Mountain Time Zone. Uh, I think it's two to three here in Arizona right now. Uh, but they were warning everybody yesterday. Uh, we sold out of the five libs on, on the first and on my show. We still had some of those twenties left. And they were telling them, "Hey, listen, the twenty dollar gold piece is going to be twenty dollars higher uh, when 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 Patriot opens in the morning." And that's exactly what happened. So uh, if you have time, tune in there as well. Uh, but but Glenn, something very interesting. Well, we've all been distracted, right? You know, we got a lot going on. Uh, here at home with the shutdown, and we're talking about unemployment. We're talking bailouts. Uh, I'll mention Kodak, and I'm you know I don't like it when governments pick winners and losers. I hate it, but I'm a upstate New York guy. Okay, I was born and raised in Syracuse. Uh, still a diehard Syracuse fan. Um, Kodak, back when I was young. They were a huge employer. Matter of fact, uh, they were Rochester. So Syracuse, Rochester, Buffalo, three uh, with, uh, you know blue-collar cities in, up, in upstate New York. Uh, Kodak was, was huge there. And I know Kodak had a big presence in Colorado. And, of course, now Kodak is, is you know, was barely still a company, right? Uh, just a shell of its former self. Uh, somehow... I don't know how making, you know, you know, I, when you think cameras and, and pictures, right, you think Kodak. Well, at least you used to. I don't know if you still think that. But, but growing up, that, you know, you associated Kodak with pictures and cameras and film. Apparently now, Glenn, they are going to start making, the government is paying them to bring pharmaceutical, they're going to make pharmaceutical ingredients in Rochester. 
Their stock has been halted 14 times. Right? Their stock went up like 500%, and then, of course, it, it went back down. But but it just craziness in, in Kodak. But but at least, I guess, in this case, and, and you know, you got to be careful what you wish for because I like it that, that, hey, if we can't get companies to do it on their own, I guess we need to pay them to bring the jobs back because that's what we did with Kodak. On the flip side of it, Glenn, Moderna, who, so it just, and I, and I know I've said this before, just so people know, a lot of these pharmaceutical stocks, and of course, they've had huge runs. The ones that have had the huge runs, the government has paid them to create or try to create a vaccine. And, and most people don't realize that the government's paying, like Moderna as an example, they're paying them. Here, so you, you know what? We'll cover all your costs. We'll give you, they're giving them billions of dollars. Yet last night, Moderna said, hey, listen, we're in the phase three, but we're going to charge 50 to $60 per dose of, of their, their attempt at a vaccine, which is a huge premium. So... You, you essentially had the taxpayer pay for it. And now you're going to, you know, it's okay to make, you know, I'm okay with them making a, a couple of bucks, you know, 10 bucks, you know, we, the, with the taxpayer pay for it, you're going to make 50 or $60 a dose. I mean, this is the problem. You know, this is the problem when you have the government picking winners and losers, Glenn. On one hand, I'm kind of happy because nobody was willing to bring jobs back home, so we paid for, at least on the pharmaceutical side, which uh, I think is important. But then again, another pharmaceutical company takes just incredible advantage of the generosity uh, of the American taxpayer, Glenn. Well, Joe, that's just like the defense industry where – that they bail out the, the, the defense industry or keep them alive by throwing them contracts. And then you come back with the, uh, the obvious uh, $300 toilet seat or the you know, $500 bolt that has to go in a certain airplane. I mean, it's just, it's just, I guess it's just the way corporations work where they, it's they just don't so realize. It's frustrating. Oh, it's terrible. It is. It it's is. Just and, so and, frustrating. The thing, and, and here's the thing, Joe, because if we're declaring war on this, this disease let's go back to world war ii when when we took the singer sewing machine plant and switch it over to making 45 caliber pistols let's do that let's let's put everybody into fighting this disease because i tell you what if we don't get this thing straight i mean i just saw an article that said the gdp is down 34 percent the next quarter not that's not well, completely yeah. a true number so what i mean, have gdp well terrible. the gdp reports coming out here uh next week i believe it is and it's going to be a horrible number Okay, down 34, 35 percent, you know, who, you know, whatever, it's, it's going to be a bad number. Okay, we know that. And you think about how much money the government is, is spending, and, and, and uh, I, I just am frustrated. I, I'm torn. I'm torn here because, I mean, there should have been something in writing that, hey, we'll pay for it. But you're only allowed to make. Ten dollars, you know, I, and and it, and then they can let them decide if they want to do it. I mean, it seems ridiculous to me that you're you're going to have something that we paid for, and then somehow everybody's got to pay you fifty or sixty dollars. That's outrageous, just outrageous. No, it, but you got to remember, all of these publicly traded companies, and I'm talking about Apple and Google and Microsoft. These farmers, they're not American companies. They're not. And this is just more proof in the pudding. And while all of this is going on, right, and we know China hasn't, hasn't uh, followed through on the trade agreements, and, and, of course, now we had the recent blow-up with the, with the consulates, the embassies being shut down and all that stuff. China's been busy. China's been really busy. And we've been talking about the dollar. Matter of fact, let's check in on the dollar today. I haven't even looked today. Um, the dollar, yeah, 93.39. So this is a new low. This is the lowest the dollar's been uh, this year, 93.39. Remember, we're looking at 92.80. 
um, as that point where we go into, okay, we break there, uh, we're, we, or it looks like we're going to start that next cycle that we talked about uh, last week. But uh, apparently China has been very, very busy in their cross-border trade and getting it out of dollars. Now remember, Brenton Woods is over. Uh, they, they allowed China to be a reserve currency. They put it in the basket of currencies. Even though they didn't meet the criteria, they did it anyway. And, and China has been very slow in doing more trade in, in renminbi up until apparently the last few months and now uh, Bloomberg and Goldman Sachs are saying that it's the perfect storm for the U.S. currency, talking about the relentless decline of yields, talking about how China now has taken 20% of cross-border trade that used to be done in dollars and is now doing them in their own currency. And that is that's significant. Normally with these, and, I, and listen, I've been doing this a long time. It would be significant if China took 3%. That would be massive. 20% is unheard of. They're quietly reducing the reliance on the dollar and cross-border trade and services. The percentage of payments and receipts dominated in renminbi and total fx transactions by the banks for their clients increased 37 percent in june and from 19 percent two years ago so two years ago 19 percent fast forward to today almost 40 percent of all chinese cross-border trade and services has now left from dollars into renembis. According to the data compiled by the State Administration of Foreign Exchange, uh, and with Bloomberg calling that the usage of dollars has declined from 70% in China down to 56%, Glenn. Yeah, Joe, it all goes back to trust. It all goes back to trust in the American dollar. And when they see these numbers that we're putting up as far as the deficits and how how the Fed is, is a joke, how it's just creating money out of thin air, why would you want to be invested in the U.S.? Why would you want to use that dollar? And when you use the American dollar, there's a lot of strings attached to it. So, yes, well, let me tell why you right now, why, there, there, there are it? a lot of strings. There are a lot of strings attached to it. Just ask Venezuela, right? Ask Turkey, right? Ask Russia, right? All of these other things. Anybody we don't like, here comes the strings. Uh, but, but the amount, this is huge. What, and here's what it also tells you. Because you've got to remember, there, there's somebody on the other end that is accepting the renembi over the dollar. Right, so this is this isn't just China, right? China can want to do it all they want, but the trading partner, the guy at the other end, be like, "Well, no, I don't want renembis, right? No, no, no." I mean, and again, even even the fact that guess what? They're not saying, "Well, okay, you don't want to use dollars. Well, then send me euros." They're not saying that, right? Nobody wants the the Japanese currency is literally it's not a currency that in my opinion it's used in Japan and everything else is just paper right paper you know they call it the carry trade uh, nobody nobody says pay me in in, in uh, Japanese yen you know what I'm saying but they're they're not they're saying yeah we'll take it we'll take the renembi we'll, we'll take the 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 Chinese one and the amount that is huge when you sit there and you think about, hey, 70% of everything China did in trade and services was in U.S. dollars, and now it's essentially by going 50%. I mean, that is a massive move. You know, from 70% to 56%, that's a 20% decline. 
So you start looking at the U.S. dollar, right? And, and you know, we're at we're at uh, 93 right now. Well, a, a, a 20% decline puts you back at 74, which was the right near the previous all-time low for the dollar. And let's face it, this trend is probably most likely going to continue. And right at the moment when we need more people than ever to be buying the debt, it's going to be very interesting. The Federal Reserve had a meeting. Uh, there's the press conference today. It's going to be interesting, Glenn. Is Jay Powell going to be dovish enough, or is he going to be, or is it going to be one of these press conferences where he sticks his his foot in his mouth again? Uh, and I wonder if they're going to. I I guarantee. Well, I shouldn't guarantee that. I doubt he'll even talk about what China's done. Because I don't think he wants that out there. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, a daily commentary continuing the conservative pro family legacy of Phyllis Schlafly. Now, the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. The second Cold War is well underway as the United States responds to the aggressions of communist China. The rapid spread of the Chinese Wuhan virus brought China's dirty dealings to the forefront of our national spotlight. But their infringements on American sovereignty started long before the release of the virus. The Chinese are constantly trying to steal American military and research secrets. You won't hear about it on the mainstream media, but professors like Xinjiang Li of Emory University... James Lewis of West Virginia University and Yi Chi Shi of UCLA have all been found guilty of trying to steal military secrets or hiding their connections to China while taking in American research dollars. Education watchdog group Campus Reform also reported that a Chinese medical student at Harvard tried to smuggle cancer research to China while Harvard's chemistry department chair, a man named Charles Lieber, was arrested for receiving $1.5 million to help build a lab in Wuhan, China. These are just a few examples of Chinese espionage in academia. We can only imagine how many other cases never came to light. A wake-up call has been issued to all Americans. China is not our friend. It's time to take action to stop their aggression. Whether it's attempting to hide a viral pandemic from the world at the cost of millions of lives or it's stealing American intellectual property with impunity, China is not to be trusted. Being pro-America is not about fear-mongering. It's not about racism or xenophobia. It's about protecting the American values of integrity, honesty, freedom, and justice for all. We shouldn't expect to see these values from godless communists. They care only about enriching the coffers of the state and the people who lead it. Only capitalism can truly empower the poor to achieve success through hard work and innovation. Lifting up the less fortunate is a hallmark of the Judeo-Christian foundation that our nation is built upon. Be proud of this nation we call our own. If we stay aware of the threat, America can prevail against the underhanded tricks of the Chinese in this second Cold War. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. What's the best way to rekindle the spirit of Phyllis Schlafly and the grassroots movement she energized? In this digital age, patriots and pro-family Americans can find insight and inspiration on our website, phyllisschlafly.com. Then, share your own heart and mind on social media. So join us at phyllisschlafly.com and every weekday for the Phyllis Schlafly Report. 800 uh, The Dow's up 90 points uh, because... Boeing, wow, you talk about a horrible quarter. Boeing burned through over $5 billion of cash, uh, reported uh, a loss of of $2.4 billion, but yet they burned $5.3 billion in cash. But, you know, you get to play play the games. But Boeing, big announcement, Boeing, more layoffs coming from Boeing this morning. General Electric, it posted a $2 billion loss. Uh, mostly because of of engines that they make for Boeing. Uh, They announced that they're going to be laying off Nike. Nike, who got a bunch of money from the the state of Arizona, they were going to build, they they did, they built a a factory that's supposed to employ 500 people. Uh, Today, Nike announced that's over, done. We're closing it down altogether. Uh, By the way, thanks for the taxpayer money. Uh, Everybody's out of work. 
Harley Davidson uh, reported another horrendous quarter. More layoffs coming out of, uh, out from them. So yeah, Dow up ninety. That makes about perfect sense, doesn't it, Glenn? Yeah, Joe, and, and we covered this a couple weeks ago. Boeing got a pretty lucrative defense contract. And once again, corporate welfare, just enough to keep them going. And it, it's basically a bailout is what it amounts to. I mean, I think they also announced that, what was it, their 777 is not going to fly for another year or so. I mean, yeah, they got they're, a lot they're of in problems. rough shape. Rough a shape. lot, a lot of problems. Uh, they've been able, thankfully, because of the Fed, they were able to borrow money instead of getting a bailout, which you think is great. But this thing it keeps going the way it's going. The taxpayer's going to be on the hook anyway because uh, they're not going to be able to make their debt obligations. I mean, it's just that simple. You, you burn through $5 billion in a single quarter. I mean, it, it, I, I don't know. Why would anybody want to buy those? No one would uh, except our, our central bank. But you're not going to hear that uh, anywhere out there. Uh, by, by the way, uh, banks are slashing credit card limits. And, and home equity lines of credit and all those things, uh, just like they did, you know, it's kind of like the financial crisis all over again. Uh, they're saying that around 70 million people, more than one-third of credit card holders, say they involuntarily had a credit limit reduced or a credit card account closed altogether and the 60-day period from mid-May to mid-July. So, again, here we are backstopping all the loans. The Federal Reserve's balance sheet has gone up almost $4 trillion. So the banks can dump all this bad debt on to the Federal Reserve, and this is how we get paid back, Glenn. That's exactly it. Well, we, we've gone That's over how you the, paid the back. Whole, yeah. I, that we've gone over the whole bailout routine on the Wednesday afternoon show on Colorado about all these bailouts that these companies have gotten and banks as well. I mean, it, it, the Federal Reserve is set up so that it's basically a cartel and it's to limit it's to limit uh, um, competition among other banks. But it's also to keep the name. The game is, to, is the bailout to keep these banks alive. And who better to pay for it than than the taxpayer or or the or the bail-in when you get the haircut yourself as a depositor. And that's the scary part. If we ever get to that point, you are going to see people are going to be upset. Right now, there's no nobody has any really skin in the game other than the fact that their money is devalued every year. And that's what you're seeing with the, with the gold right now. It's not that the gold's gotten any better. It's the fact that that dollar now does not buy as much as it used to. That is the key point to all of this, Joe, is, is that. Well, when, when you think about it, you know, here we are uh, in in this situation where uh, nobody really knew what to expect. We're we're starting to see now, right? The V, there is no V. Um, what are we going to do with 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 all of the unemployed and and numbers out today saying, listen, thirty million, you know, but you know, and it's still happening. The layoffs. I just named four huge companies. All of them are saying the same thing. We're laying off. By the way, 3M yesterday, right? And throw them into the mix. Every outside of if you're if you're not Apple and Google and and Facebook and Netflix or a pharmaceutical company, right? You're laying off. And I don't know what the what the end game or the solution is going to be. But then you factor in, like I said, forget about that for a minute. Let's look at the dollar. Right? And I've been pointing it out now. Kind of took me a little bit after I got out of the hospital to get going, but I tried to start warning you about the dollar here. Uh, now it really makes sense. You know, Goldman had a scathing report out about the dollar, and they were talking about, hey, the reserve currency status of the dollar is done. Now it kind of makes sense after the news that I, I got out of China that oh, now I see where you're going. Right, these are major moves, unprecedented moves, and you got to remember, China is the world's largest trader, not us anymore. It's China. China's the number one trading partner for most of the world, including us, and they're shifting it all into what 
They're shifting it all into their own currency. Not into euros, not into yen, not into sterling. And, and what currency are they eliminating? The dollar. Yeah, Joe, and if you also look at everything they've done around the Pacific Rim and their Belt and Road Initiative, is that they've gone in and they've loaned lots of money to these third world countries and getting them hooked on the renminbi or the yuan, and they're just cementing, they're cementing the use of their of their dollar all throughout the world where, you know, at, at one point, if you wanted to have an alternative currency to the dollar, you would go to war with the U.S. like Gaddafi. He wanted to create his gold dinar. Uh, he was taken out. And we just can't do that anymore. We don't have the ability to go fight everybody that won't use our dollar. And that could be the next big problem with uh, military conflict between us and the Chinese on whose currency gets used. Because remember, all wars are bankers' wars, Joe. Well, you know what? It, it's interesting. I did see an article the other day talking about we're much closer to war with China than people realize. And, and Glenn's right. It's, it's always a banker. Uh, it's a, at the end of the day, follow the money. That's what the wars are really about. And, and I, I, I'm in shock today. I had no idea. I mean, and I know I was out for a while. And, and you know, I went three weeks without even seeing any news of any kind. Um, and I'm blown away by these numbers because... Up until this last report that we saw that, that was put out by Bloomberg and also by Goldman, China was barely, I mean, it was maybe 2 or 3% was renminbi use. So now to go from there to 20%, it, it's, it's incredible in how fast they were able to do it. The, the fact that all of their trading partners were willing to do it tells you, hey, you know what? We got as much faith in, in China's ability as we do with the United States' ability. And that's saying something. Patriot Radio News Hour, when we return, I have, I'm so excited about what we're offering today. Stay with us. Don't touch that dial. 800 Got another divergence here in gold, uh, London, which all of our wholesalers use the London exchange or the fix in London uh, to set their price. Gold is 1961 in New York. Uh, gold is, and by the way, up, right, uh, up again. Gold's up eight in New York as well, but it's only at 1953. So we, we've got another one of these divergence in the paper gold markets, but uh, it, it kind of makes me laugh because it's, it's incredible. The, it's, the volumes are through the roof. Everybody is, is, is reaching into uh, the markets, and whether it be paper or physical. Uh, you know, yesterday we had the Mint saying, hey, we throw our hands up. Uh, we're going to produce less because we just can't do it because of COVID. Yesterday... I was running. We ran the special. We had the $5 Liberties, which we sold out of. We had the $20 gold pieces yesterday at $22.15. Uh, there's still a few left of, of those, but they're $22.35 uh, this morning. But one of our, and I'm sure a lot of our hosts, a lot of people listen to this show. I mean, you know, we've been doing it a long time. And you think about when Eric started this 25 years ago. Uh, because we give out great information. It's what we do. We spend a lot of time, uh, whether it's me, uh, Eric, Glenn, Brian, Jason, we do a lot of research to get you out uh, the news that you need to hear. But one of our wholesalers was listening. He called me this morning, and he said, Hey, do you need more $5 gold pieces? And I'm like, well, yeah, what's the price, you know? And he matched the price that I had yesterday, even though gold has moved higher. He matched yesterday's price. So yesterday we, were, we only had, I think we only had 20, 20 of them when we sold them all. I've got 100 
and seventy five today. Five dollar lives. This is the. I think this is a record. I don't think I've ever had this many five dollar gold pieces because they're the hardest ones to get. You know, the twenties are the easiest to get. Then the tens. The fives are tough to get, you know, and you normally, you know, maybe if I got, oh, I got 50 of them or 70 of them. Never had 175 of them. So here's the deal. One through nine, 590. 10 through 19, 585. 20 or more, 580 at 800, 951. Zero five nine two. Take the time. Put them away. Just think about the news you heard today. So we got the dollar now at a new low, right? Well, a new low in this cycle. We we've got Goldman Sachs yesterday saying, "Hey, the dollar's roll, the reserve currency is under is under significant question." And then we learned today that China has moved cross border trades and services. 70% of it, which used to be done in dollars. A year ago, 70% of it was done in dollars. A 20% reduction. Now down to 56% and falling. And again, at a time, you know, you think about it, how much demand do we need? We need people to buy treasuries. And you don't buy treasuries if you don't need dollars. I mean, it's just that simple. You don't buy treasuries if you don't need dollars. And the largest trading partner in the whole entire world is telling everybody, we don't need dollars, which means you need to own gold. It's just that simple. What is gold telling us right now? Like Glenn said, listen, an ounce of gold is an ounce of gold. The gold hasn't changed. What's changed? And the answer is very simple what's changed. The purchasing power of your Labor is what's changed. It's worth less. It's worth less. Think about anybody buying treasuries. I told you yesterday, essentially, really, if we're being honest, our treasuries are negative. When you factor in inflation, you can't buy a 10-year note and get 0.59% in interest when inflation is, even you know, the lying inflation of the Fed is 1.8%. You're essentially saying, I'm going to lose 1.3% of my money every year for 10 years. It, 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 it makes no sense. By the way, two lines are open. Two lines are open. Be patient. Uh, you just If you're on hold, wait for us. U.S. $5 liberties, uh, 1 through 9, 590. 10 through 19, 585. 20 or more, 580. Uh, real quick, I got, I've been saving this. The city of New York. Since George Floyd's death, say that rioters have caused over a million dollars of damage to police cars. They said that 303 New York City Police Department vehicles have been vandalized since May 25th. 14 of them are, were total losses because they were set on fire. Uh, they're saying that uh, another handful, I think there's another handful they're, they're still working on. Most of them have since been repaired. Uh, but, but it's amazing, Glenn. How, how do we let that happen? Oh, it's, it's very simple. There's no political will to stop it. It, make, it. The Democrats think that this will make Trump look bad, so they're just letting them go. And if you've just looked at the news recently, uh, Trump is pulling the federal police officers out of Seattle and Portland. I, I think he's surrendering. This is terrible. We should be sending more in there. Crazy. Well, that's what I thought. I was hoping at least maybe there was a deal that they were going to actually crack down. I didn't see the details. I just saw the headline, but... I don't get it. I really don't. It's another reason to own gold, but you just don't get it. That makes no sense. Take your radio news hour final segment coming up. Final segment, 800 592 Don't sit on your hands. Don't wait. It, it, it's, it's too risky to wait. And I know, I mean, we all want to pull back. It just, but uh, again, so I'm in my email, another price increase. This is how quick things are moving. Uh, make sure, take the time, 
Put them away. Listen, we got a long way to go in this thing. You know, people are trying to make a big deal out of 2000 Believe me, gold didn't break its all-time high for 100 bucks. It's not how it works. You know that. You know, we're, we're setting up every time uh, we've broken previous all-time highs. I've been employed here since, the, you know, 1980, we hit that $800 level. I was here when we broke that. Where did we go? We didn't go to 900 or 1,000. We went to 1,900. Right now we've broken 1,900. Right? And I'm just thinking conservatively, you know, $4,500 presents the bag. You know, that's how I look at it. Now, and I'm not saying $4,500 next week or the end of the year, but you know what I'm saying. This, this trend, this is how these cycles work. And you start paying attention to the dollar, and you start thinking about it. You just start connecting all the dots. The last time when gold ran to the new all-time highs, what happened? Well, the dollar went from 120 into the low 70s. Then it pulled back from 1900 back to what? The previous all-time high, so, you know, pulled back to, to uh, the 1,050 level. Because the dollar had come back, right? The dollar rallied back, right? That cycle, that cycle's over, and now here comes gold again. And of course, when you sit there and you start looking at how did the how did gold hit eighteen eight hundred? Well, the dollar went from one thirty five to eighty four. Back in the eighties, right? And then then of course we had this move. Now we're getting ready for the next move. Uh, I think the dollar's going to be somewhere in the sixties when this move is over. You know, and I know, you know, and I've told you at infant item, uh, Eric thinks we're going to twenty thousand. Uh yeah, and if we go if we go to twenty thousand, yeah, paying five hundred and ninety bucks and getting five thousand five thousand dollars for it later, yeah, that's not a bad deal. Uh, U.S. five dollar liberties, one through nine at five ninety, ten through nineteen at five eighty five, twenty or more at five eighty. And speaking of Eric, keep him in your prayers, please. Keep him in your prayers. This is he is battling, he is battling. Uh, no, you know, he had a slight improvement the other day. Today, nothing's changed. Uh, he's not any worse, not any better. Uh, but, but I mean, he's he's fighting, he's battling for his life. Keep him in your prayers and in your thoughts, please. At the same time, make sure your financial house is in order. I mean, the way I look at it today, Glenn, China just told you to increase your gold holdings by 20%. I mean, that's what they told you. I mean, that's how I look at it, Glenn. How about you? Absolutely. I'm 55. I'm working to get an ounce of gold for every year I've been alive. The problem is I keep getting older, Joe. <laughs> right, you keep getting older. You got to remember, you got your wife to worry about, right? A couple of kids. I mean, that you know, that's that was Eric's measuring stick. He's like, listen, just to just to make sure you got to have an ounce for every year you've been alive. And if you want to live high on the hog, right? Yeah, you four or five ounces for every year you're alive. I think you're gonna make out real well. Picture Radio News Hour. Those five dollar liberties away while we've got them, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Everyone, take care. God bless.